Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to another episode of the F1 Worldwide The Fan Podcast and we are back in England after being in Indonesia last week with Viandra. We are here with Ed today uh, who is from Reading in England so uh, welcome Ed for coming on. Hello. Um, so what we are going to do, Ed is a McLaren fan and so what we're going to discuss today in the topic is what we can expect from McLaren in 2020 and what you're hoping for as a fan and obviously we'll look beyond that as well with obviously the big rule changes coming in 2021 and obviously that renewal of the partnership between McLaren and Mercedes which will be interesting to see how that all pans out. Um, so yeah, I'll first pitch the question to you, Ed. Uh, what what are you kind of expecting from McLaren in 2020? Well, I mean, obviously, like, the hope would be for them to get third, but that's a bit of a far shot. But um, I feel like it, 2020, with the development that's going on, it could be like a midfield battle, but like, getting more points than what they did last season. Yeah, I think that's that's probably like a fair start to it. Yeah, as a fan, obviously, you would be hoping from third. I, I just, it probably is too much of a big step next year to uh, see if they could overtake. But certainly the goal has got to try and close that gap closer uh, to Red Bull. And if you can convincingly beat Renault again, or at least make sure you beat Renault again, I think that's another positive season from uh, what you had this year. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Um, so, obviously, Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris were a new partnership for McLaren uh, this year after both Van Dorn and Alonso left. Uh what are you kind of expecting from both of them this year? Obviously, it would be Lando's second season in F1 and uh, Sainz is obviously second season with McLaren. Well, I feel like um, Carlos was a stronger driver, but obviously Lando's in this rookie. So, I feel like... I mean, obviously, Carlos has done way better last season than Lando, but because he's a rookie, I don't think um, you can expect too much. So hopefully in 2020, well, it's 2020 season, hopefully he will he might be able to improve. And I feel like it's just time for Lando and when eventually he'll become a stronger driver and more experienced. Yeah, I'd certainly uh, agree with that. Do you, have a, do you have a preference out of the two of them or do you just support both of them? Equally, I wasn't sure with Lando, the young British guy, whether he'd be more or whether you uh, have more of affiliation to Carlos. Well, oh, it's kind of more Lando just because he's British. Mm. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I think it is going to be interesting to see. Obviously, yeah, in terms of championship points, um, Carlos Sainz did comfortably beat him, but obviously Lando was... Uh, matching him in qualifying and actually beat him 11-10 in 2019. So uh, do you think that Lando can beat Carlos in qualifying again next year or do you think Carlos will step up his game? I feel like it all depends because it kind of depends on what Carlos does. I feel like the times Lando could have, the times Lando did beat him, Carlos definitely could have driven a bit faster. So I feel like it in the season we'll have to see what Carlos Sainz does okay cool uh not too bad so obviously Carlos Sainz managed to secure sixth in the championship in 2019 um in in 2020 what would you as a McLaren fan uh think would be successful for him obviously he beat both Albon and Gasly, who had half a season in Red Bull, but would you expect him to beat the likes of an Albon in 2020, or do you think seventh is the best he can hope for? Um, what I want to say is him to beat Albon again, but then I feel like Albon having just 
had his half season and now having a full season he's used to the car I feel like Albon will probably be able to take that sixth, sixth spot and it'll be a fight for seventh between him and someone in the midfield again yeah fair shout and who do you think will be uh, McLaren's closest competitors in uh, 2020 in the midfield do you think uh, it will be Renault again or do you see um, Haas having a rejuvenation or racing point coming back into it or do you think it's just a straight fight uh, for fourth between McLaren and Renault um, I, I have a feeling it could just be the same as last season but you never know there could be Haas or Racing Point coming up with some new development, so I don't think you can really tell at this part of the season, but yeah. Yeah, obviously we we are doing this pre pre the season and pre any testing, so we are kind of blind. It is more just kind of hopes and optimisms for McLaren yeah. in 2020 at the moment, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it, it would be really interesting to see how they kick on and how they develop in 2020. And, yeah, I think fourth is the realistic one. If they can, I mean, you never know. They they might have some fantastic aero development uh, this year, building on last year's one, and they may be closer to Red Bull than we all think. But, yeah, realistically, I think you're right. It probably will be uh, McLaren and Renault fight uh, for fourth in the championship. And then, therefore, in the championship, I would like me think it'd probably be Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo fighting it out for P7 in the Drivers' Championship. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's probably correct, yeah. Which, yeah, be good. And so, with 2020 kind of almost feeling like it'll be another building block ready for the big rule changes in um, 2021, uh, what are your thoughts as a McLaren fan um, with the return of the partnership to Mercedes, which is obviously the last time they won a championship and their success was with the McLaren-Mercedes partnership. Well, yeah, I think it's kind of, as you said, it's just they are the champions, so their engines are obviously going to be good. And when Mercedes were partnered with McLaren, it was some of their golden... Yes, and obviously they won the world championship with Lewis Hamilton, so I don't really know what else there is. It's kind of like, just I feel like it's definitely going to be a massive improvement to whatever McLaren could have had in 2021 instead of uh, Mercedes, so yeah. Yeah, it's Renault are still playing catch up, and although the engine's improved and probably the third best engine on the grid. Like you said, Mercedes, they have the championship winning car. So they have a very good engine. It's arguable whether it's Mercedes or Ferrari is the better engine. But realistically, McLaren were never going to go and get a Ferrari engine, I don't think. Um, So Mercedes, it it really gives them a strong partnership. And as there is no engine changes in 2021... It, it's pretty much the same engine that they've been, you know, doing really well with throughout the whole of the hybrid era. So it makes sense if you could do it, which McLaren have done, and get the best engine. Why not? It, it just seems a no-brainer, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I just think, I hope it, if they do have this contract, that their engines stay as good as they are in this era into 2021 because you never know that engines might change for 2021 not be as good so yeah it would that's very true you you never know what might happen but i think as i believe the rules and regulations around the engine as in there aren't any rule changes like obviously the big ones from the V8 to the hybrid era in 2014. There isn't any major changes to the engine. Um, not until about 2024, I think. So you're hoping probably as a McLaren fan that you've got at least three years there um, where you can compete 
uh, with a very good engine and then it'll be up to your aero guys to produce a very good car yeah so um all right that probably 2021 is probably the interesting one to kind of dream and hope as a McLaren fan obviously there's lots of talk we won't know until we get there of like closer racing uh leveling the field out obviously budget caps um and everything and keeping everything controlled spending uh McLaren have got a new wind tunnel um everything I right, first question would be in 2021 do you think you will have the same driver lineup as at the start of 2020 so keeping both signs and Norris Yeah, that's. Uh, it feels probably it will be performance dependent, which is there, and it'll, it'll be interesting to see because obviously Carlos signs his contract runs out at the end of this year, and I believe Lando's does as well. But I imagine they'll probably be keen to keep Lando Norris if they can. But Carlos signs will be the one up for grabs, and do you think that will be either maybe a bigger team? Uh, well bigger teams wrong word obviously McLaren are a big team in F1 but you, you know one of the top three teams to come knocking maybe a Red Bull to try and get their previous junior driver back for them I mean yeah I would agree I think obviously Carlos has shown talent by beating Red Bull so I feel like Red Bull probably would want him and obviously they've got more money to give to get him so I wouldn't be surprised if it was a move to Red Bull yeah, it and that, like you said, it's it's going to be, we can do all ifs, buts and maybes here, but a lot of it will be performance based. So if Albon isn't performing and they don't want to go with a Kvyat or Gasly, then obviously Carlos signs, they were teammates before in their Toro Rosso days, I believe, signs and Verstappen. So yeah, it would be interesting to see, but I think Signs has already said that he would like a new contract with McLaren in 2021. Yeah, I saw that. I think yeah. So um, I yeah, I think both drivers would probably like um, to kind of stick with McLaren in 2021 with the shakeup. Um, but here's a question with you. Obviously, uh, Lando and Carlos were one of the uh, probably best teammate relationships this season. Um, <laughs> plenty of kind of funny videos on social media and all across the kind of McLaren stuff. Um, do, you, do you think their relationship will stay the same? And if the car becomes more competitive, do you think they can still get on as well as they do now? Well, I feel like, um, obviously... You have this Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc little arguments in the track constantly because obviously they're both competing for the top position. So I feel like, yeah, if the car does become a top contender, yeah, it probably will make it more like aggravated on track just because all these drivers want the best position. And if your teammates can slow, then you're going to do anything you can. So, yeah. I feel like it could easily get quite toxic. Yeah, which is something that McLaren have got to manage quite well because obviously in the history of the team, they know that having a toxic relationship isn't necessarily the uh, best thing. Obviously, probably having one of the most famous and toxic uh, teammate relationships with Prost and Senna, I, I imagine yeah. they... <laughs> They probably never want to get back to those days. So yeah, yeah, that was bad. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. I I don't really, from memory, I I don't know. If you know, I I don't think actually McLaren have any junior drivers really, um, in like F two or F three at the moment, who they could bring in if Carlos Sainz goes. No, I don't think so. I, I think they've just got like 
junior academies from different types of racing, but I don't think in F2, yeah, I think yeah. I with that. Yeah. No, I'd agree with you. I think a lot of it was setting up for other series. But yeah, Sete Camara, uh, Camara I believe, was was part of the McLaren Academy, like Nick DeVries before him, but he's now, I think, looks unlikely to race in F2 next year. So, yeah, it, it would seem unlikely that a guy who's not in F2, if Carlos left and they didn't want to get anyone else in the field to back up Lando, um, it would seem unlikely that they'd bring in a junior. So, yeah, I, I suppose we, we'll say... If Carlos left and you kept Lando, who would be out of the current grid your ideal partner for um, Lando Norris? Well, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't see Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Bottas, um, or Charles coming. But I'd say un, you, could, you could probably get someone from under McLaren and I'd. Probably, preferably, I'd like Daniel Ricciardo just because overtaking's amazing. So, I mean, yeah. And they get on pretty well as well, actually, Ricciardo and Norris. And it, it could be a more of a mentor uh, relationship, couldn't it, in terms of helping yeah, yeah. Lando Norris out. Well, obviously, Signs is still that. He, he's very young, still 25, so he'll be probably around about 20 so he should be 26 by the time the 21 season starts so he'll be coming into his prime and really wanting to kick on so that would make things tougher between him and Lando but I, I could see a Ricardo and Norris partnership in the future for sure I, I if somehow you could convince him to stay in the sport and he wanted to come uh, probably Kimi Raikkonen would be a very good mentor to Lando. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then then that would complete the set for Kimi of returning to his previous um, teams. Actually, I think he would have to return to Renault as well. But obviously, he started at Sauber and he's now at Alfa Romeo Sauber. Uh, or now with Kibitza, I think it's... I think it's now Alfa Romeo Orlean because yeah, uh, Kubitz yeah. has brought his sponsor, hasn't he? Uh, and then obviously came back to Ferrari as well. So that that would be an interesting one. But I, I think I'm with you. I think it probably likely will be Sainz and Norris, but that is all dependent on uh, performance based <laughs> from there. But yeah, I, are you, as a McLaren fan, are you excited by the the future of the rule changes and excited by next year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of mixes it up. So, I mean, it could either go badly for McLaren or go well. Like, you could either drop the grid or get into the top three. It all depends on how well the team adapts to these changes and makes the car better for the track. Yeah, and I, I think McLaren are a team like Renault actually, who are making a lot of backroom staff changes and obviously they'll have that new wind tunnel uh, and obviously Andreas Seidel, uh, he's been a very good team principal for you guys um, since, uh, who was the French guy? Um, forgotten his name. Uh, he now runs uh, the Paul Ricard track. It'll come to me. It begins with a B. Um, but yeah, what, what do you make as Andre Seidel as a team boss? Yeah, I mean, I think with 20, uh, well, yeah, I think McLaren's quite lucky to have him just because, obviously, I mean, he, he is a good boss, everyone knows that, so I think he probably could if he wanted to go to a higher team, so I, yeah, I'd say McLaren's quite lucky to have him stay and be loyal, yeah. Yeah, I think he's he certainly helped a lot with the on track things, uh, and then and, and then that's allowed. Uh, obviously, Zach Brown is kind of like the face in the media, isn't he? And he's he's very good for the marketing. Um, what what are your thoughts on Zach Brown? Do you, do you think he's? 
has, has been a revelation for uh, McLaren? Do you think he does a really important job for them? Um, uh, I was, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he's a team boss, so yeah, I mean, he is good, but I, I don't know, I don't really uh, look into Zach Brown as much, so I'm not really sure how to answer this one. <laughs> That's all right. I, we're, we'll leave it because obviously it, it can be at times you just kind of uh get so excited by the stuff on track you forget but i i think for me um zach brown has been massive for mclaren in terms of boosting their image i i don't know as a fan do you have like the mclaren app and stuff uh, yeah yeah and so I, I think he's in terms of building the mclaren brand and everything off track and uh, I think he's been very good for you guys. And it's kind of just allowed Andre Seidel to get on with the stuff in the garage and not have to worry about any of that. So I think that's uh, that's very good. Um, very good for them. Uh, but, yeah, if we, uh, if we were just kind of rounding off your thoughts on McLaren, um, what, what would be your thoughts overall thoughts for 2020 and overall thoughts for 2021 a good season uh it all depends on i mean they've got the whole break to work on the car so it all depends on how much they work on it i mean obviously as i said being optimistic it could be a third place but realistically uh, probably a fourth or fifth um 2021 uh basically just again how much they de decide to develop the car for the new changes and if they can make it good enough to compete with the top teams yeah i think those are uh, probably good thoughts and i uh, and we'll start uh, and we'll round off kind of the podcast just just a bit more personal because obviously it's a fan podcast so i'm interested so so why mclaren why why is mclaren the team that you decide to support Oh yeah, and it always used to like. I always it, it was quite eye catching, and obviously when Lewis Hamilton won that championship in it, I, I think I was like eight or ten. So I decided, uh, yeah, they they're British. They had a British driver, so I support them. Nice. I, I think a lot of people um, uh, around your age. Who were new to the sport would have would have started supporting McLaren just because of that because obviously uh, yeah having the British driver and then obviously they had the double British lineup in Button and Hamilton as well which was uh, I and that was a very good partnership as well because both were pretty likable guys so uh, was was that around the time you started then watching F1 or would you say you were aware of it in 2008 but when would you say you started properly watching F1 uh, the time, yeah the time I properly watched it was Button and Hamilton that's when I was like watching it week and every week nice so around about 2010 yeah something around that yeah okay nice so oh wow so you've pretty much um See, I it, it's a uh, it's not nice, but it's pr probably seen the decline of McLaren over the past decade. You're like going, oh, how how exciting! 2008, yeah, we're world champions, McLaren. I'm I'm excited by this, and then just see that steady decline, and obviously uh, the poor seasons under Honda. But you, you know, you you've you've been through it now, Ed. You, you're now on the rise, hopefully, again. And hopefully, you know, McLaren can have a much better decade between 2020 to 2030 than they did between 2010 and 2020. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, yeah. But, Ed, thank you um, so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, really enjoyed talking McLaren. And that, that's what it is. It's, it's That's why we started this fan podcast, was to kind of talk to fans about their favorite teams to talk
talk about topics around their favorite teams and or stuff within f1 that they just do it have you, have you enjoyed coming on chatting about mclaren yeah it was good yeah Oh, massive. Well, thank you so much uh, for taking your time and coming on. Uh, I know uh, busy with kind of school stuff coming up as well. So I appreciate you kind of coming on and going on that front. But yeah, guys, that is that is it for today's fan podcast on McLaren. If you uh, have any thoughts on what me and Ed have discussed today, obviously leave those in the comments down below if you've liked the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and obviously if you're new around here subscribe to the channel click that bell notification and you can watch more videos uh, just like this one uh, thanks again ed for coming on thank you and for now uf1 fans keep racing